3D Aerial Acrylic Nail Art Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be showing you this really cute little aerial design that is part of my Disney Princesses little mini series that I don't know how, how long it's going to go on for sure. But I really like this one and I wanted to do my quick little intro here with our mermaid suits on in front of the ocean on our vacation because it just seems so very appropriate. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So to begin with, on my aerial nail, I'm going to start with a shimmery overlay of white acrylic. So this one isn't a super opaque white, it's kind of like a soft, soft white. So, and it's got that nice glitter, then encase that with a layer of clear acrylic. That's just going to make sure the nail is nice and strong. And then after I get all that done, I'm going to be filing it into shape with my e-file, starting out with a really coarse bit to remove any bulk. And then after I have that done, I'm going to take a finer bit and go through and file it with that just to smooth out the surface and make sure it is perfectly all smooth and pretty. And now I'm going to begin sculpting my Ariel. So I'm going to start with a cover pink color of acrylic and do her head, neck, body, and arms. So basically everything but her hair and things like um, so she has that seashell top on. I'm going to do that uh, later. So don't worry about leaving that as a gap or a space. Just add that on top. So her, it's like her clothes and her clothes are on top of her body. So just do her body and then add her clothes on top. So there's her face. And then I'm going to take, and that's just like the first layer. As you can see, I kind of pushed in my brush a little bit for where her eyes are. I didn't do too terribly much 3D sculpting as far as like sculpt her eyes and her nose and her mouth and all of that with the acrylic. I just went through and did her basic face shape with it and I did everything else with paint. However, when I did that, I did push in for her eye sockets just to give it a little bit more of bit, uh, a bit more of that dimension. It is fairly small. This nail is maybe a size six, I would guess. I'm not entirely sure, probably a size six. And that's not huge as far as the amount of space you have to work with. So don't really overstress about adding too many of those 3D details, especially if you are a confident hand painter. I know there are some people that hand painting them, the little details on there, that's the part that they stress about. And sculpting the 3D stuff is, it just works for them. And if that's your case, sculpt away, do as much as you like. However, if you're somebody that sculpting the 3D stuff gives you a bit more of a you know, a bit more of a run for your money, then go ahead and do more with painting. It's all about a balance and finding what works for you. And just because this is a good system for me, doesn't mean that that's going to be what works the best for you. So definitely switch up processes a little bit so that you have a better experience. After I have all of that cover pink done, I'm going to go through and I'm going to do all of Ariel's hair. So she has a lot of red hair that's kind of swirling all around her. So I'm going to be adding all of that. And when you're doing this, use fairly thin red acrylic and then butt it up against all of your cover pink that you've sculpted so that it just kind of, if it's thin enough acrylic, it'll just sort of rest around everything and not necessarily cover it up. Because what you're trying to do is you're trying to get it to go around what you've already sculpted, not cover anything up except for at the top of her head. So just be careful not to kind of be a little careless with your red and cover up some of your cover paint because you're going to end up needing to file it off then and starting and starting that section over. So there's a little wisp of her hair that's right at the front of her face. Add that so it kind of wraps around her head a little bit. That would be the great thing about being underwater all the time is that your hair would just be all flowy and pretty. That being said, whenever I'm in the water, I have my hair braided very tightly because otherwise my hair is a huge knotted mess otherwise. And even sometimes with the braids, my hair ends up being a huge knotted mess. But then I'm going to be sculpting her little seashell top with purple. And now the rest I will be doing with acrylic paint. So I'm going to take some really bright red acrylic paint and add highlights on her hair. My red acrylic that I was using was a little bit on the medium dark side, so that way you have a nice base layer that you can then highlight. If your red acrylic is really, really bright, you might want to go through and add low lights with burgundy instead of highlights with a red. So that would be something to keep in mind. Just add those little bright red highlights. See how much more 3D your hair looks. That's the great thing about being able to paint on top of your 3D work is that the 3D acrylic is as 3D as it gets. I mean, it's however 3D you sculpt it. But sometimes those little details that you add don't necessarily show through until you add some paint on them because that really just brings everything out. So now I'm going to take some, I added some lighter purple highlights on her shells and then I'm going to take some brown and I'm going to be doing little outlines around Ariel otherwise. So I'm going to outline her chin with brown, do some outlines on her arms and around her chest and her body with brown. Instead of doing black, it seems 
for her, it just seems so harsh to do black outlines. So I decided to go with something a little bit softer instead. Then I added her nose and then from her nose, I'm going to add her eyes going out from there. Still, I'm using brown here. Her eyes later, I will add some outlines on them with some black. That way, it, if you do it with a brown first and you make a mistake, it's not nearly as detrimental as if you did it with black because the brown, you can basically just kind of paint over and cover up and nobody's ever going to know it. But with the black, it's a little harder to do that since black is well it's the darkest color so obviously it's going to be harder to cover up add her lips and a little bit of white for her teeth in there add some more outlines i also took some red paint at some point and i added a little bit of red hair coming over her shoulder fill in her eyes with white and then i'm going to be adding a little bit of a teal color in her eyes for the iris make them really nice and bright blue and i also did her eyebrows with red it was more like a dark burgundy red color, but instead of doing it with black, that same thing kind of made them look a little softer. There's her black little lash line on her eyes. Add some little teeny tiny lashes on there, just like that. So if you were to do more with acrylic, instead of doing so much with acrylic paint, I would have done some sculpting on her nose and probably just done the whites of her eyes for me personally. But same thing, like I said before, you can do whatever you're comfortable with. And then I added black for her pupils and her eyes, a little bit more outlining here and there to make her eyes really pop, a tiny little white highlight in her eyes, some red for her eyebrows, or dark burgundy more so than regular red. I added, I added a little bit of that in her hair to add a highlight or a low light here where I needed it, and then add that little wisp of hair that's coming down over her shoulder. And then I'm going to be applying some gel sealer over the background to make sure that that white is super sparkly and then some matte top coat over Ariel. And now I'll be doing that scale nail. So I'm going to do a gradient from a really pastel green to a medium green. So I added the pastel green at the cuticle, brushed that down, the brighter green at the tip of the nail and brushed that up. Make sure that the gradient looks really nice. Once you're happy with the way your gradient looks, go ahead and encase that with a layer of clear acrylic. If you are doing your gradient and you're like, man, this just isn't turning out, try filing it a little bit. Sometimes that makes it so that it blends a bit better. If you are having a problem, that sometimes will fix it. Then I'm going to be filing it into shape, same the way that I did with the aerial nail. So coarse bit, then a fine bit, then apply a layer of gel top coat. And then I'm going to be burnishing in some gold green chrome duochrome powder over the surface of that to make it look really shiny and really scaly and fish-like. Then with a medium green color of acrylic paint, I'm going to go through and paint little U shapes all over the nail to make my fish scales. So just add a set of U shapes and then add another one. So I, the first one I did isn't right at the cuticle, it's just right below it just to kind of create my first base straight line and then you can build off of it. Kind of like doing tile in a bathroom floor. You don't start on the edges and then work from one side to the other. You start somewhere in the middle and then build your way out. Same concept here. Um, I probably, you know, depending on what you're doing, you could have started actually in the middle of the nail and then build your way out if, you know, depending on how you want to do it. But I thought just a little bit down from the cuticle and then working out would work well for me and I, I did. The thing is, is as you paint, you progressively change every single time, just a little bit how you're doing it. So it, you, maybe your scales get just a little bit smaller each time, or maybe they get a little bit crooked each time or whatever happens. And it gets a little bit more and more the farther you go, which is why you want to start in the middle and work your way out. So my scales I thought got eh, pretty good. They did narrow, I think a little bit towards the tip of the nail, but that works since this is a slightly coffin shape. So it's not a big deal. And as you can see, my scales almost fade to in being invisible at the tip of the nail. I liked it that way. If you wanted them to stay vivid all throughout the nail, you might want to use a darker shade of green just so that on the darker shade at the tip of the nail, it still was really vivid and really easy to see. Apply some top coat over the scales and then you are all done. I hope you guys like this design as much as I do. Please share recreations with me on Facebook or Instagram and check the description box for more of my princess designs. I will be making more of them as I go and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!